What's up, trendsetter gang? What's up? I'm, I'm holding up these brushes and that sponge for a reason. Um, This video is about makeup and the coronavirus. Yes, you heard what I said. It's makeup and the coronavirus. Um, in this video, I want to talk about um, how to prevent or help prevent the spread of coronavirus from like from personal use with makeup and the brushes to, um, you know, per when I say personal use, I mean at home with your own personal makeup brushes um, and, and makeup as well to um, to in store testers and application. OK, um, so let me give you an example like at home, like these are my brushes. You are supposed to be washing your brushes anyway, but um, and your sponge. But you see, these are dirty. I'm not going to say dirty, but I, they're dirty because I've been using them. They're not. If you see, don't see the color. It's dirty. I just used them today. I'm washing them after this video anyway, but. As far as personal makeup application, you should wash your brushes. Now, I don't wash them every day because I use them just on my face. But you have to wash them. If you have to wash them. If it's just on your face, and you need to wash them at least once or twice a week. And that's what I do. I try to wash them at least once or twice a week on a regular basis. But, but it's just for my face only. Now, if you are a makeup artist... OK, which I will talk about later in this video or you are working in an in a makeup or in store retailer for makeup like Ulta or Sephora or you just a doggone makeup artist and you got your own clients or whatever or esthetician. What you need to do is make sure that your tools are clean and that's going to have to be per customer. So, um, if you're using a brush like this or like this, now I use this for me. I'm not using no sponges on, if I use a sponge on a person, I bought that sponge for them. So that means after I use it, they can take it home and keep it for them. I'm not going to use it. I wouldn't use it on somebody else. Let me say that. Um, when I did my daughter's makeup, even though she my daughter, I do not put my stuff on her. I use my brushes, but I clean my brushes before I use them. But my sponge, I will not let her use. Um, now, so with the brushes, if you're a makeup artist, they have um, brush cleaners. And what you can do is you spray the brush cleaner on the brushes and start to dab the color off on the paper. And you keep spraying and dabbing until it's clean. And then you use it on the next person. That's, that's how I would do it, okay? Um, I wouldn't go to any place that does not clean. If they, does, they, do, they don't clean their brushes or clean them in front of you so you can see um, that's what they're doing. Or, or, I mean, sometimes you don't have to get them cleaned in front of you. Sometimes you they will clean. Like, I'm a clean person. I'm going to clean the brushes in between, in between customers. If, they, if, it, if it was me... I will be cleaning brushes in between customers as soon as that, that customer leaves out of my chair. I'm going to the I'm going to clean. As soon as they leave, I'm cleaning my brushes. And I make the other customer sit there and wait for a minute. Let me let me clean this brush and I'll get started on you. And usually they're gonna say, okay. Anybody in their right mind gonna be like, oh no, we ain't got no problem. Do do that. They will prefer you do it. And then it would and for them to be able to see it is the plus. Um, but when you, um, and I'll talk about that more later, but that's what I wanted to give you an example of from personal use. Um, you don't have time to wash it every single day. I get it, but it doesn't matter like that because it's just your face, but you still have to wash it because if your brushes and, and sponges are not clean, even though you're the only one at home using those those tools the makeup tools the brushes and the sponges baby your face will break out okay 
And if you're a makeup artist, you got to clean them brushes and sponges. You got to clean them per customer. And, oh, let me say brushes you clean per customer. Um, with the, In the makeup world, you don't have time to clean. You don't have time to clean the sponges. You get those applicator, those wedges, they're white, they're like white wedge, makeup wedge applicators, and those are disposable. You use them on a customer and you throw them away. If you are going to somebody to put on makeup on your face, I don't care if they're just doing a color swatch or matching, you know, foundation or whatever. If they don't have a white wedge or a clean um, makeup sponge applicator to put that on your face, don't let them put it on there. Don't. Um, yeah, so that was that because makeup artists should be, um, you clean your brushes because you have to use those over and over again. You don't use brand new stinking brushes every time you get ready to do an application, but you must use the, um, the brush cleaner. Um, for, as for a sponge and makeup application to put your foundation on, we use the disposable white wedge makeup applicators that you can trash when you're done and then when a new customer comes you can get a new sponge for that new customer that's sanitary practices okay now the brushes we can't change them all the time but we can make sure that they're clean but the wedges um they even have eye makeup applicators if you want to get cute with it um for eyeshadow that you can use on a customer and throw them away okay they got all kind of stuff to be sanitary so you watch for that when you go into stores like Ulta and Sephora and any other places be very careful because your skin your body that is the biggest organ of your body is your your skin that's it that's all over you know what I'm saying that affects you a lot so be very sensitive and be very careful about that. So let me get into the beginning stages. Let me let me start from the personal before I get more into the, the personal application. I mean the uh, in-store and makeup artist application, all that. Um, so anyway, um, I read, I was reading in the New York Times article where it was saying that Corona is spread mainly through respiratory droplets that launch into the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes. So it's airborne. Okay. Anybody can get it. Anybody. Um, it spreads mostly from person, um, from person to person contact within a six foot radius. Um, according to the Center for Disease Control. So it's technically, like I said, it's, it's technically an airborne virus. Um, so for personal use, I would say these are the things that I would say to do. Um, and they are one, two, three, four things just for the, you know, just for your personal application. Wash, 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 or clean, clean, clean your makeup brushes and sponges. You need to do that at least, like I said, once or twice a week if you can help it. Definitely once a week. So for the next week, you got to clean, you got clean brushes and clean sponge. Um, so do not share your personal makeup brushes and sponges you know most makeup artists they have their own personal and they got their own that they use on artists and some people use the same that's some people they use the same brush they use for themselves and use for the artist if that's the case you need to definitely clean them brushes all the time i'm just saying but for the most part um makeup artists I want to believe a lot of them have their own brushes. That may not be the case. So I don't want to say that because everybody's probably not doing it. But it should be if it's not. However, um, if you work at an in-store retailer for makeup, make sure that your makeup brushes, like I said, are being clean per customer. Because they do have the sprays where you can spray it and dab and dab and dab till you get that brush clean on the paper towel 
or the napkin. Um, and like I said, they do have makeup, um, makeup brush cleaners. Um, so you can sanitize the brushes in between, uh, makeup uses per customer. Um, I mean, your personal makeup stash, that's you. I, I feel like that needs to be yours. And if you're a makeup artist, you need to have a separate brush, bag, all of that. You know, it needs to be separate. I would do it that way. Okay? Um, if you can't do it that way, you're a beginner and you you using your own brushes or whatever you're doing, that's quite all right. Just make sure that you're cleaning those babies on a regular basis. I mean, now I don't even say regular basis. They need to be cleaned every day. If you use them on your face and then you use them on your customer, they need to be clean so your face don't get contaminated with their stuff. And so your face don't contaminate their face they don't you know what i'm saying with you know what i'm saying because y'all both using it the bottom line is keep it clean 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 and cleaner than that if that makes sense um for public use i would say avoid um well let me hold on give me a second on that one okay so that's just you know and and i'm gonna say this for the for the for the personal use wash your hands before application i would wash my hands before makeup applications for me or for my customers do you understand what i'm saying i would do that um so the cdc recommends um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. So for public use, we um, you know, talking about um the coronavirus. So for public use, um, what you want to do is let me just say this: when you um go into a makeup retailer. Like Ulta, you know, an in-store retailer like Ulta, Sephora, and whatever places are out there where you can go and, you know, try testers. I don't care if it's Walgreens. If they have testers, you probably shouldn't touch them. Just keeping it real. Um, don't touch them unless you have your own disposable brush like when, when when a makeup artist does mascara and they have mascara you should have those sticks with the with the brush on it it's a spoolie they're disposable spoolies that you stick in the mascara and do the customer's eyelashes with you do not use the same brush that you might use on your eyes with to somebody else as you use the disposable spoolies they have disposable spoolies uh, that's a tongue twister they have disposable spoolies and they have disposable um uh makeup applicators where you can um and lip gloss they have disposable um they kind of got fur on them um or i say velour or something um soft like it's, it's, it's like it's a makeup lip gloss one that's what it is but you can stick it in lip gloss they have one for lip gloss they got makeup applicators Makeup disposable applicators for eyeshadow, makeup disposable applicators <clears throat> for mascara, which is the disposable spoolie brush, and, and lip gloss um, disposable applicators with the white tips on the end. Those are disposable. So, like at this point, you know, unless they have those available for you to test, I wouldn't test anything, not with your fingers. Okay? They need to have those applicators. If those applicators are not there, I would not test makeup with my fingers. 
because you probably didn't wash your hands. You just got out the car to walk into the store. So you probably got germs. And when you touch the handle to open the door to go into the store, you got germs already. So if some if somebody had the coronavirus and they touched that door and you took your finger and you took in your hands open the door that they touched and you take your fingers and put it in that tester you have now contaminated the tester for not only yourself but for everybody else oh yes i'm a germaphobe i am i think about stuff like that um so be very careful with that um Yeah, you need to have, you know, and, and, and I'm going to just be honest with you, like Ulta and uh, I like Sephora because Sephora, they got samples for everything. They got them in packs. So you can take the samples if you need to see it. And I understand that, you know, when you buying expensive stuff, makeup is an investment. OK, and so when when you are um buying the products and i understand you want to see them you want to feel them you want to touch them and you want to sample them that's great but we gotta now do it in a healthier way and companies are gonna have to the ones that didn't have t uh sample uh samples i like sephora because i feel like the samples are better than the testers because they can take them home and try them. It, it's not in store and public and everybody. Even with the pu the the disposable ones, I think it kind of gets weird. It, it's weird for you see people. You know, you looking at the makeup and people been doing this to it and poking at it and prodding it and putting it on their face. You it just kind of make you leery. But the the package samples are going to be probably the number one thing that this industry is going to have to grab a hold of or they're going to lose out on sales. And I hope they do. I hope they grab a hold because I prefer to have a package sample because I ain't got to worry about no disposable applicators. I'm at home. I can open that bad boy up and try it, the cream or whatever. You know, the samples is everything to me. And I love samples. I like the fact that I can go into a store like Sephora and, and just... They got samples for days. You can just go in there and try, just try, 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 try stuff. Okay. So it, you know, package samples are probably the safer thing, but everybody don't have package samples, but the testers are going to still be there for some companies. So I'm telling you a healthier way to even deal with the testers. Okay. Um, but I love Sephora for the package samples. I love them for that. That was, that's genius. And they're going to, they're not going to have any problems. And anybody, any makeup companies that's in their store need to grab a hold of that. Because if people can't test your product before they purchase, especially if it's a, a very expensive purchase, a lot of makeup companies are going to lose out on sales if they don't, if they don't quickly grab a hold I'm just saying, um, I know for me, I won't be testing anything that I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't do testers too much. So I think I, I think I did a tester a couple of times. I'm not a tester girl. I need a sample. And usually if I can't sample it, if I decide to have the gall, the guts, you know, to buy it, I'm going to buy it. And if I don't like it, I'm taking it back. So it, it 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 don't matter even if the person purchases purchases the item, the product, if they purchase that makeup product and they decide they don't like it, people are gonna be you're gonna have a lot of um returns. So you still losing money. You may get money for them a couple of days, but if they come back and they say all oh, the and people come back all the time making returns on stuff. So if you you're gonna lose out. I'm just saying the the makeup company. So let me let me get off of that because I'm I'm getting into my soapbox on that because I just feel like a lot of companies need to bow down on that and I feel like they they not really bowing down and that's gonna hurt them. But I think they're gonna find that out quickly. They're gonna find that out quickly. Um. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. Just be careful. 
Um, you know, like I said, I, I'm in love with Sephora samples. I mean, I, I love it. I need the package samples. I need I need the package samples and just be and that you know, like I said, all samples are not gonna be packaged. It's just a healthy way to deal with testers and samples. Testers and samples is pretty much the same thing, except one is packaged and the other one is on display for you to get your disposable brush, which also has like disposable brushes and um lip gloss brushes and mascara brushes for you to use and q-tips um for you to apply um if you want to check the foundation and see how it is they got cotton balls like if you go somewhere and they don't have those do not touch the testers i would advise you not to touch it you can do what you like but I would advise you not to touch it because thousands of people come in there putting their hands on stuff. And everybody don't use the testers. Trust me. Everybody don't. No. Um, so, you know, so with the coronavirus all in itself, you know, after all of this and before all of this, um, avoid close contact with people who are sick and not sick. Um just for precautions like if you're talking to somebody try to step back and y'all step over there and talk not that you're trying to be don't be obvious just you know do it tastefully and just kind of keep your distance oh and i wanted to say for those who are still going to the nail salon that's why i love my kids nails i mean now they I, i'm finna put some more on but i'm saying i love my kids nails because if you're going, it was, uh, I read on the article, it was a lady, and I can't remember her name. I think she's in New York. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I think it was a man. He owned like four nail spas or something. And I'm not going to call the name. I can't remember it anyway. But um, I do remember it starts with a W, but I'll leave that there. But he has four salon spas, and he said it's mandatory for all nail technicians to wear the mask and gloves while they're doing nail applications in, in the nail salon. So those that are going to the nail salons, You have a right to ask them to put on a mask and some gloves. If they got a problem with it, I get up out of that chair. I don't care how good they are. You need to have a backup plan. And you need to go to somebody. You know, you paying your money. You get to say how this is going to go. Like, you're protecting your health. And everybody should be protected. At this point, it's a national emergency. Everybody should be protective. And if they are not, they should be... Um, What's the word? They should be, they should want to, if they're not doing it, if you say it to them, they should, they should want to do it because it means they're going to lose money. But if they too cocky and they feel like, oh, we don't, you know, we don't need to do it. And I know some nail salons, you know, some of the Asians, they act a little, you know, they got a little attitude and they want to be doing this. We're not, we're not doing it. Like I pay my money. If my money not no good here, I'll take my business elsewhere where they are looking out for my health, where they care about me. Because obviously you just want this dollar. You don't care about me as a person. Cause if you really smart and you a business owner and you own a nail salon, ain't no customer you're not going to trade no customer for no coronavirus. You're going to tell them, you know what? We will definitely put these gloves on and this mask. If that makes you feel comfortable and it makes you want to come back to this nail salon, we're going to put it on. But scratch that. At this point, it's a national emergency. They should already have it on. If they don't, somebody need to say it. And they can look at you crazy if you want to, but I go to the owner, I go to the desk real tastefully and say, excuse me, are y'all not wearing the mask and the gloves? Because you know the coronavirus is, I mean, which are, are y'all not doing that? And if they say, oh no, I'll say, well, they have a nice day. I got to go, bye. You're not getting your nails done? No. Because y'all know the coronavirus is out here. I'm not getting my nails done. I don't go to the salon. I'm just saying in an instance, if it were me, what I would do. Okay. Um, so now back to the coronavirus itself, now that I've broken it down from the personal, you know, makeup 
application in into the the in store um, testers and in, in, in the makeup application. Um, let's get back to the virus. So what you got to do all together, whether you getting your makeup applied, whether you testing the makeup. Um, well, uh, yeah, and whether you're getting your nails done, avoid close contact with people who are sick and not sick, even if they're not sick and they applying your makeup and they're doing your nails, they probably need to be wearing a mask. I think it's just preventative and it's just safe. Um, if not, that's fine. That's up to you if you don't require they wear a mask, but I mean, it's up to you and it's up to the jobs too. But I think as this thing continues to be urgent, it's going to affect sales. And when businesses see that it's affecting sales, it's going to get crazy. It's going to be where everybody's wearing a mask and glove. If you are a makeup artist and you own your own business, you can call the shots. So put them gloves on and that mask and just let people, let, let your customers know when they come, send a text out to your customers and say, look, the coronavirus is going around. I'm not saying that, that y'all going to get me sick, but I want to protect the both of us. So I'm going to put on a mask and I'll put on, you know, I might put on a thin pair of gloves. I don't know. Or ask them what would make them comfortable. But but it needs to be a discussion with business owners and, and customers because people's businesses are gonna suffer for not taking the precautions. Trust me when I tell you this, because you got you got people out there like me who are germaphobes and obsessive compulsive. I'm almost obsessive compulsive with it. I don't want you coughing in my face and sneezing on me because uh-uh. And yeah, cover your mouth up. Nuh uh, cover your mouth. You feel that sneeze coming on? Make that hand get get close to the mouth while you feel that coming on. Get that over there like that. Boom, cause uh uh. Um, so back to the coronavirus. Avoid close contact with people who are sick and who are not sick. Wash, wash, wash your hands. I cannot say that enough. And let me just put a note out there. When you wash your hands. Don't just wash here. We always wash on the inside, but wash here. I learned this in health class when I was in college. I think I'm dating myself, but wash, you got to wash the top of your hands. Not just the inside. We always go to the sink and the first thing we do, and I, I've watched people do it. We just wash this, run some water and go, but you got germs up here on top. You got germs on the top. Wash them hands on the top. For real. Um, the, um, the CDC recommends frequent hand, frequent hand washing 20 seconds with soap and water. Um, that's 20 seconds. So I say 10 on here and 10, 5 right there and 5 right there. You got your 10 on top. Booyah. Um, and then that's with soap and water. And then they said, and 60 to 90% alcohol based hand sanitizers can kill the virus. So I'm going to just go on and tell you, I'm such a germaphobe. Let me tell you what I do. I wash my hands and I use hand sanitizer back to back. I'm, I'm talking about as soon as I wash my hands, I'm, 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 going, I'm grabbing my hand sanitizer after the wash. And sometimes before I do hand sanitizer, wash and do hand sanitizer again. If I feel that need, I will do it again. Like I said, I'm a germaphobe. I'm obsessive compulsive about it. So, I, you know, keep you some hand sanitizer. You can go get Purell. You can get it at the dollar store. Keep it on your keychain. Hand sanitizer. Come on. We've been doing this for a minute. Keeping the hand sanitizers. I got one in my purse. I got one in my car. I got one in the house. Keep some hand sanitizer and the hand sanitizer has to be 60 to 95 percent alcohol based hand sanitizers. So it'll kill the virus. So look on the back. If the hand sanitizer don't say 60 percent to 95 percent alcohol based, don't get it because it ain't going to kill nothing. You got to get 60 to 95 percent alcohol based in order to kill that virus. I got this from the New York Times article. I'm just I'm just telling y'all what it says. Um, also, cover your face with a tissue when you're coughing. So when you're coughing, you can either do this <coughs> and close it in. Don't have it out like this. Close it in <coughs> like that. Or 
or <coughs> or <coughs> now some people do the elbow okay if you got to do the elbow get it right there in the corner <coughs> like that but I'm a big cover your mouth if I don't have any tissue and if I got some tissue girl <coughs> You ain't got to make sure it's folded pretty. Get that tissue in before that cough come out and go. <coughs> you know, just like that. I know that's dramatic, but that's me. Um, yeah. So you cover your face with a tissue, your hands or elbows, you know, or a napkin before and while you are coughing. The reason why I say before, because, you know, you can feel when that cough getting ready to come. If you don't have no tissue, you can use your hand or your elbows. If you got a tissue. I mean, if you want to use all three, <coughs> whatever, make that, don't be in people's face coughing. My daddy used to tell me that when I was young. He was like, don't do that. That's so disrespectful. Don't be sneezing and coughing all over folks. Throw some up like a barrier. Some people, you got people, even before the coronavirus, you got people that'll do that. They'll, you'll be in a public place and they just like, I done been around people like that, honey. I get up and move. Uh uh. When I see them doing that and they ain't got no bed, let me get up, honey, because y'all playing. And I give them a look like, ugh. Don't, I don't want none of your juice and showers on me. I already had a shower. I don't need all that. Like they say, um, say it, don't spray it. <laughs> mm mm, honey. Um, so yeah, avoid. Um, and they say also avoid. Contact with live animals. I'm, I'm going to have to calm that down because if you clean up people's houses and they have animals, you might have to ask them to put them animals up. Avoid live contact with animals because a lot of them are, I'm hearing, are carriers Bats, people making bat soup in China. I don't do bat soup. Bat soup with the bat at the end. Y'all didn't see that picture when the coronavirus first came out where they had the, 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 the soup bowl and the bat was right there around the soup. Ugh. I'm just getting like the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. But anyway. So avoid contact with live animals i'm gonna because i'm vegan i'm gonna say avoid contact with dead animals because we don't get nutrients from dead flesh and blood that was in the words of dr sebi right there we don't get nutrients from dead corpse dead blood I mean, dead animals. We don't get nutrients from them. You can say it if you want to. That's why everybody's talking about being vegan and eating plants. Because you you eat live. You eat life. The plants are life. Plants grow. You know what I'm saying? Animals, when you kill them, you cannot get any nutrients from dead flesh. You can't. Okay? So we can we can debate about this and we can argue about this. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm just telling you, you cannot get nutrients. There's You've never heard that you got nutrients from a dead piece of meat that's been killed for you to cook and eat. Stay away from it. If you, if you wanted to ever be vegan, this is a greater time than any to be. If you eat meat. You might want to kind of take the time to take a break off of me. I would do that. Since we don't, you know, everybody, they still trying to figure out how to to kill, to, to, to cure this thing. And they don't have no treatments. If I was eating meat, I would kind of back off a little bit. I'm not saying that it's in me, but you don't know. I mean, I'm just keeping it 1,000. It's a lot of things in meat that we ain't even, that's why we're not supposed to be eating it. Now, I don't want nobody to get upset because I ain't trying to convert nobody. If you don't want to stop eating meat, like I said, you can do what you want. But you heard it from me. Mark my words. Dead flesh don't have nutrients. Chalk it up how you want to chalk it up. But it's the truth. If they tell me to stay away from live animals, by me already being vegan... 
I definitely want to stay away from dead animals. You do the math. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm no, I'm not a doctor, and I forgot to put this in the beginning of the video. I'm not a physician. I'm not a nurse. I'm not nothing in the medical field. But I just do things that I think are, you know what I'm saying? Some stuff is common. Just think about it. Just think about it. Some things are common sense, but I understand that common sense is not common. So we won't go there. But, um, yeah. Um, another thing that I would like to suggest um, is... I know that um, they say that, you know, you can get if somebody has coronavirus and they got the sniffles, what area, whatever area you're working in, if you're at home, let's say you're at home with somebody that has the virus and you don't have it. I feel like you need to keep I always believe this and I remember we learned this in science and in class. Keep the area cool because bacteria, viruses can't live in cold areas. That's why, like, in, in a, if you look at the New York Times article that I read, it talked about how all the continents have been affected by coronavirus except for Antarctica because it's the coldest. Come on now. Viruses can't live in cold. We be saying how we don't like cold and all that kind of stuff. And I know I say it because I'm from the South, but I'm going to be honest with you. Where it's cold is probably going to be the less, the less cases. In the areas where it's warmer, it's probably going to be more cases than not. Um, so, yeah. Um, germs cannot live in cool areas. So, that's another reason why... I like, you know, I feel like you need to keep your um, apartment, your house. I like to keep it, you know, keep it cool. And sometimes, I ain't gonna lie, sometimes I get real cold, but it it keep down, it keep down a lot of germs, okay? And I I'm, I agree with that. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know, when, when you're thinking about it like that. And I know that, um... I know that our hands are going to be taking a beating. Probably now people are going to be washing their hands more than ever. Um, I always wash my hands, but when, when something like coronavirus comes up, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even more on top of washing my hands. I may overdo it. So our hands are going to be taking a beating. What you need to do is after you wash your hands really good, And use your, and then get some hand sanitizer, put it on both of your hands, put it on the outside too, the inside hand sanitizer. After you do that, let your hands dry. And when they dry, get some kind of an oil or a lotion that has moisturizers in it to put back into the moisture back into your hands so your hands won't look because you know sometimes I wash my hands so much my hands look white and ashy get some lotion some Vaseline or something that's got moisturizers that stick that can put the moisture back into your hands so your hands don't dry out and look old and white and crusty and clammy okay um and even though you know, the directive about, you know, the public health increase is urgent. Um, and it's, incre it's increasing in urgency. I know that vanity, we can sometimes allow our vanity to battle with our common sense. Don't allow your vanity to um, battle with your common sense. And what I mean by that is, like I said, don't be using no testers with your fingers. You know better than that. Don't do that. Like, really protect yourself out here. Love yourself. I love you. If you don't care nothing about yourself, I don't know what to say, but I love me. I love y'all. I hope y'all love y'all self. And just take heed to some of the things that I was saying in this video. Um, <clears throat> and I was going to say to avoid eating out a lot if you can. I, like I said, I've cut down a lot on it because I, you know, vegan, I have to make my own food and I like to because I know what's going into it. But the reason why I'm saying eating out less because I used to work at fast food. My first fast food job was McDonald's. 
people come to work that prepare your food sneezing, coughing, runny nose. And I feel like that's how a lot of people going to catch it, too, is eating out. Because you don't know how many hands your food is going through before, until, until you get it. So even though I ate Zaxby's today, I'm, I'm taking a risk. But I think about it every day. I know that there are times we have to eat out, but do it as smart as you can. Do it. I mean, as smart as you can, as smart as you can, just try to think how, just think smartly and with common sense about how to do everything to protect yourself. I'm not saying live in fear. I'm not saying don't eat out. I'm not saying don't do nothing, but just be mindful of everything you do at this point in reference to preventing germs, bacteria, and anything that could set you up and anybody around you with the coronavirus. I feel like if we get a little bit more mindful um, and preventive, um, it'll help us, you know, prevent this spread because we got to, we got to, you know, tighten up on that. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, Makeup and coronavirus, do not allow your vanity to battle with your common sense. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Okay? Take it from me. I love you, Trendsetter Gang, and thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and su subscribe. Also, don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll always know every time I upload a video. If you don't get the notifications, please just drop by my channel to see what new videos I've uploaded because... As I told you before, stay tuned for new videos every week. There will be new videos every week. If you like to donate to my channel, all the money that's going to my channel, I will give you a shout out. Um, and I will keep you posted and give you receipts on things that I'm doing to improve my channel. That will be the purpose of the donations. Um, like I said, you can donate if you like. It's up to you. You know, I'm loving. If you don't, I still love you. It's, it's. I'm not. I'm not begging you. This is a option. Um, but if you, if, if this is your kind of channel, this is your thing. You know, donate and give. Um, I think I'm gonna do a live. I'm gonna try to do a live video soon and um start to announce about the giveaway that I want to do. So. I'm going to make sure I keep you guys um, posted so you can definitely be in on the video. Um, and just remember, it's Trendsetter Gang or No Gang Gang. Yep. Love you, Trendsetter Gang. And see you on the next video. I love you. Bye.